All right, CR, you're a simple guy. You like butter in your ass, <laughs> lollipops in your mouth, and a good prison movie. And they just don't make a ton of them. And Shock Collar came out seven years ago. I didn't see it in the theater. It was on cable one night. I had heard a couple people say it was good, but just really didn't know. And uh, I dove in about halfway through. And I'm like, what is this? And um, ended up watching the last hour. So unfortunately, I knew where it was going, but then doubled back. It's on a lot. Now it's on Netflix. And uh, it just, it checks a lot of boxes for us here. Yeah. I mean, I think at the time it had the reputation of that movie with Jamie Lannister and the Aryan Brotherhood. So you were like, oh, okay. Interesting little <laughs> turn from him. I mean, not exactly uh, the most touchy-feely character on Game of Thrones, but certainly a fan favorite. And then... You know, just imagining Nikolai uh, Kasser Waldo being being like this prison lead, gang leader essentially was sort of hard to imagine. But when you go back and watch it, it has a lot of the homies in it, man. It has a lot of our guys. Uh, it's about like it's told in this really compelling way, way with these dual storylines, kind of overlap like different chronologies, and it's just like a real, real, real tight prison thriller and really provocative in a lot of ways about you do you do have a lot of like what would you do in this situation moments to, while watching this movie yeah there's so many reasons i love prison movies but i think that's the number one reason right you're constantly going what would i do how would i handle this would i go this far what would i do if people were turning on me would i would i be the one that the first day in the yard i would have to set the tone and be like nobody fuck with me Oh, I'm happy to go in the hole because I just got in a fight with somebody. Um, what would you do all day? It just takes you to this alternate universe. Like, what kind of books would I read? Even when the yeah. beast near the end's like, hey man, I have some good psychology books. I'm really into those. I can drop those off later. It's like, oh, interesting. The be the beast is trying to learn. The beast lending library is open. This is great. <laughs> the beast is like, my club is nine dollars a month. Um, there's some interesting. Big picture meta commentary here about Jacob, who's the stockbroker in Pasadena, yeah. kind of a go, go, go money guy. And you're trying to climb the ladder in that world in a different way. It's innocent, but you know, you're trying to gain power and gain access and gain information and try to get money. And then you go to prison and it's completely different, but also maybe not that much different. Do you think that's one of the points of the movie? Yeah, I think that the thing about prison movies that are, aside from like, you know, you have a whole subgenre of prison movies, which are essentially about escape, right? Where it's like how, if you were facing this kind of incarceration, like, would you contemplate and how would you execute an escape? And that's Shawshank and that's Escape from Alcatraz and we'll get into those. But then there's a whole other brand of prison movie that's essentially about prison as a backdrop for like the morality and ethics of people that most people would assume like these guys lack morality and ethics. But then all of these different structures from society come into play in prison. Politics, uh, pecking orders, hierarchies, trading. There's a prison economy. There's prison. There's illegal substances in prison, which are essentially the currency. So I just get deeply fascinated. I'm reading a book about women in prison right now called The Mars Room. What? It's just a really, yeah. It's, just, a, it's just a, a spare no time little woman in prison movie? <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's book? A, no a novel, yeah, by Rachel Kushner. It's really good. But I was just, I'm just always fascinated by by stories that come out of prison. And it's, a, it's, a, it's as, a, as an American kind of industry, I think it's both appalling and really fascinating. Do you remember the first time you became hooked on prison content, movies or TV? Like what broke your cherry? I mean, you know it's Oz, baby. Come on, you know it's Oz. Oh, so it was It was late 90s. <laughs> My parents used to watch uh, Escape from Alcatraz and like Papillon would be on. Like I remember like there was like always like a couple of things and you know, you could even go as far to say that The Great Escape is a prison movie, although it's like much nicer than the prison stuff that we watch now. But yeah, I think Oz was the first time I started thinking about the sort of social tapestry of prison in a different way. So I was way earlier and I was also an only child, but you had from, from 79 to 83, you have Jericho Mile, mm -hmm. you have Longest Yard and reruns, you have Brewbreaker with Robert Redford, American, uh, uh, the uh, American Ex Midnight Express for some reason was on in cable, yeah. mainly because we didn't have a lot of movies back then. And that one gets really dark. Um, then 
Bad Boys is 1983. Brubaker was weirdly one of the first ones because that in that one, Robert Redford is running a prison, goes undercover before he gets the job so he can find out what's going on in the prison and um, kind of crosses a couple lines. And then at the end, they give him the slow clap, which I'm still convinced like created the slow clap. But I remember seeing that over and over again. And, and at some point along the line was just like, man, prison content. It's just yeah. really good stuff. <laughs> I just, and your brain starts churning. What would I do in this situation? And, you know, it, all these different, I wrote down, I didn't, I was going to do this in what stage the best I'll do this now, but like things I just love about prison movies, the hierarchy. Yeah. How they just figure that out, who gets where, how you have to get to where you want to go, who you have to make friends with, who you have to be afraid of. Crooked prison guards are incredible. Amazing. They always have them. I don't really know if it's how it's worth it for them or what they get out of it, but they just can't help themselves. You know, your money will be deposited every month. A lot of that stuff. I like that the friend groups or in other circles, gangs. But yeah. uh, everybody just gravitates toward numbers and you just want the numbers. You don't want to be the lone wolf. You want to be, you want to belong to something. Racial components to that. Well, too. there's <laughs> that. That's that's where the dark side of that. But everyone's like, how can I have numbers? I need yeah. numbers. A lot of teamwork. Yeah. The reading. I was a big reader as a kid. Just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're trapped in your cell. Just like, what am I going to read? Ah, you know what? I'm going to read a separate piece today. I haven't read that yeah. one in a while. Um this is a staple, the poor guy who cries the first night Oh God. when they all come in. I like when the guys come in, everyone's like, oh, new blood's in. And it's then the there's fish, that one yeah. guy who just can't handle it. And I don't care what movie it is. It never it, turns out well for that guy. He's the guy who's like, I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. yeah, I'm not supposed to be here. Or he's just sadly sitting in his bunk, like crying. And you're like, oh, don't cry, dude. I love the nicknames. Prison movies have phenomenal nicknames. We'll go into some nicknames in this one. You always have the one character... In this movie, it's bottles where they do the, uh, the only thing we have in this life is respect. It's the only thing you have in here. If you lose your respect, that's it. Uh, yeah, it's always amazing that guys like bottles are never like, hey, do you like the uh, the Giants or the Dodgers? Like, what do you like? No, there's <laughs> what, no, yeah, there's no sports conversation. What do you think of Tyler what, Glass now, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite mafia movie? Yeah, no, it's all like this big picture respect stuff. Yeah. Riots in prison movies or TV shows. I mean, this was an Oz staple. Oz would like, we're not going more than a season without a riot. But the riots, the setup for the riot, when everybody starts hiding their weapons or coming out or passing weapons along, I like that. Uh, the shanks, I like the different kinds of shanks. Sometimes you have like the screwdriver shank. Sometimes There's you just have the knife shank. Incredible shank action. In, in I would say color. some of the best shanks we've ever had in a prison movie. And then uh, I like when people meet their cellmate and they have to size each other up immediately. It's almost like it's a speed date for roommates where it's like, yeah. am I going to have to fight this guy right now? Is this guy a potential... You know, is he going to try to sexually assault me at three in the morning tonight? Are we homies immediately? Can I trust him? Yeah. You just have to. Do, do we have similar body art? <laughs> right, right. Do you like lifting too? I like lifting. It's like you want to lift me. That's great. <laughs> it's like Dirk meeting Reed Rothschild, but uh, in a prison cell. Uh, <laughs> what else? What else do you love that I didn't I love mention? The, I love the verbiage. This is, and shot collar has a ton of it, but I love all the like slang. Like, who's got the keys? Are you inked? Are you clicked? Like, yeah. are you valid? Validated, all that stuff. Like I love having to like wood. Go to, in this one, it's wood. Yeah, wood. yeah, yeah. I love having to go to the glossary to like figure out like, oh, what are these guys talking about? I love the way language will emerge from places because people are kind of trapped there over time and they start to think of new ways to talk to each other. Yeah, I think this movie has that in in, in abundance. Yeah, that was one of the things I loved about Jericho Mile as a kid. I mean, we haven't done Jericho Mile yet. It was the first Michael Mann movie. It's one of the great TV movies ever, and it's set in prison. And the, the dialogue that the guys had with each other, I just never seen anything like it. It's like, what I mean, is this? It's like prison's another language. A, prison's been an obsession of man's the, his entire career. Like we, when we talked to him about heat, he clearly had was still thinking about like where guys like Neil had become who they were, right? Like yeah. being at Folsom or being at San Quentin. And then like even in Black Hat and stuff and the guy is like, yeah, I do, you, you, you do your time. Don't let your time do you. Work on your mind, yeah. your body, and your spirit. It's like like all this philo philosophical stuff. Like It's an obsession of a lot of filmmakers. One of the things I like about Shot Caller, it, it feel, if, like, if you had told me, what's the guy's name, Rick Romanois, 
Yeah. Who, yeah. Di- who did... Uh, he wrote Den of Thieves. Wrote Den of Thieves. He uh, he did Snitch. He's... I, I don't know if we'd be best friends with him, but I definitely think we'd have a fun dinner with him. It seems like he has a lot of our interests. We, if you, you could have stopped me at I wrote Den of Thieves and I wrote and directed <laughs> Shot Caller. I'd be like, all right, we should at least yeah. be acquaintances. Yeah, let's go to a Kings game. Come on. <laughs> But if you told me Michael Mann was Rick Roman Wall all along and that this was his movie and he was like basically um, wearing a disguise and just this movie has so many different Michael Mann elements. Yeah. Now he's coming out of like Michael Mann's made a bunch of movies. I'm sure they influence this, but this is this checks a lot of the Michael Mann boxes, right? Oh, even down to like uh, money driving around downtown Los Angeles when he gets out the first time. And like looking at his old offices and stuff, it looks like collateral. I mean, like it kind of yeah. feels like that. So yeah, it's a it's a very cool. I can't. I don't know exactly where they shot it. So I I, I think I made this mistake with Den of Thieves, where it was like this was shot in Atlanta. I know you say it's Gardenia, but it's not. Yeah. You know, but it's a cool LA movie too. Just uh, like a cool California movie. It really obviously pulls from some of the same places. Man, man shoots in. There's a little Jacob, aka Money, in this movie, and Neil Macaulay. They, they're definitely like on a text chain. Yeah. I feel like they would know each other or they've bef- definitely been in the same support group or something. These are guys who are basically like, I am now a lifelong criminal. I don't want any attachments. I'm probably not a great person. Um, all I have is power and, you know, and, and my, my dignity. And that's it. That's, that's yeah. what I care about. The text chain probably would be a little bit delayed because you've got to write the text, give it to the prison guard, then 30 minutes later he <laughs> right. hits send, then he brings it back. So it's a little like carrier pigeon-ish, but yeah, I could see Neil and Money having some 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 interesting anecdotes for each other. Yeah, they, they're they definitely in the same phylum. All right, so I did my, uh, I did, when I wrote my uh, book of basketball, well, it actually goes back to when I did my old column and I did a baseball hall of fame pyramid. That was an idea from my buddy Gus's dad, Wally Ramsey. And we blew it out and we created levels and we did this whole pyramid. So then when I did my basketball book, I really wanted to do the basketball hall of fame pyramid, which was five levels, 96 players in all. And the bottom level of the pyramid, the concept was you walk into the hall of fame the lowest possible level are all the players that basically just made it. And then as you start going up the stairs, the next level is a better level of players and it keeps going until you get to the fifth level, which were the best players. I was thinking about a mini pyramid for prison movies and what that would look like. So basically you have the first movie at the top, the next level is two movies, the next level is three movies, the next level is four movies, and the bottom level is five movies. And I think Shawshank is at the top for me. Okay. You probably disagree. What would you have at the top? I think I'd probably have Cool Hand Luke at the top, but I I I I acknowledge that Shawshank is probably gonna be most people's pick. Also, Shawshank, if we hadn't done it yet, would have been a lock for rock bottom month. Because I don't think anyone hit a bigger <laughs> rock bottom than Andy Dufresne. No, probably I, not. The sisters raping him for two years and Red's yeah. going, I do believe those were the worst two years for Andy. <laughs> New bruises every day. It's like, yeah, I was Probably, that was probably the worst for Andy. Um, All right, so you have Cool Hand Luke. I had that in the second level. So Shawshank, next level, Cool Hand Luke and Bad Boys, which we already did in the rewatchables. Then the level right below, Jericho Mile, Longest Yard, and Shot Collar. So I have Shot Collar as my sixth favorite prison movie right now. Yeah. So above Blood In, Blood Out, above. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Next here, Blood In, Blood Out, Brew Baker, American History X, and Escape from Alcatraz. And then the bottom level, the entry level, when you walk into my little mini pyramid hall of fame, American Me, Midnight Express, Sleepers, Lock Up, and The Hurricane. I couldn't get there with Green Mile. Yeah, I don't, I'm not it's, a Green Mile fan, parti- per- particularly. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. And I, you know, it's a prison movie, but not totally. And I just couldn't get there. So out of all of those, what do you think? What's the most underrated for you? Blood In, Blood Out? Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, American Me and Blood In, Blood Out both are, are amazing. I would, I, the only other editions or ones that I would nominate are like these two uh, ones called Bronson with Tom Hardy that Nicholas Winding Refn made. That's like early or 2000s. And then shot, uh, Startup, which is this movie with Jack O'Connell and mm. Ben Mendelsohn. It's really, really good. That's set in, in England. So I would... Uh, English I would prison re- movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. 
Um, but those, the ones you picked are awesome. You know, I mean, I guess some people might be like, is the great escape a prison movie is, you know, is Papillon too long or too, too boring? I don't know, but in the name of the father. So what about, let me ask you this. Do you consider the rock a prison movie? (sighs) No, not in the traditional sense. Okay. And you don't, and you don't consider Con Air a prison movie? No, I don't. I think it's, I think it's adjacent. Yeah, there's prison adjacent. Okay. For it to be a true prison movie, and this is why Lock Up, which is a mostly terrible movie that we'll end up doing in the rewatchables, almost definitely with Kyle Brandt, and has an amazing football scene. In the middle of the movie, there's like this eight-minute football scene that is like one of the best sports scenes of any random movie that's not a sports movie. But I need prison culture to make it a prison movie. Yeah. I need somebody to be incarcerated and dealing with the other prisoners and the guards for at least a section of the movie. That's why blood in blood out, which, you know, Shay Serrano's not at the ringer anymore. We still love Shay. He has to come back to do blood in blood out. Like, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know if, if he moved to a different country or whatever, he still has to like fly back and do it. We would never do blood in blood out without Shay. I didn't even really feel great about doing shot caller without Shay. I know, but I feel, uh, like, I feel like his presence is here. He's like right over my shoulder. I texted him last night. I was like, hey, man, long time no talk. We're doing Shot Caller tomorrow. I was thinking about it. And he's like, I love that movie. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I think there has to be some version of prison I'm culture. behind bars. Just be, not just passing through. Yeah. Yeah. So Blood and Blood Out, a significant section of that movie is in prison. But it's not a complete prison movie, right? So in this movie... A significant sections in prison, but not the whole movie. That I would say it's probably like a half. Yeah. And half. So, like, I mean, obviously, Rounders would never be considered a prison movie, even though I deeply enjoy the prison stuff in Rounders. Like, right. It has to. You have to really spend time there. But the card game in Rounders gets an honorable mention. That's a fun side list. Is just random prison interludes in movies that weren't prison movies. Yeah. We um, we when my dad took me to Alcatraz. When I was a kid, because we went to San Francisco. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, you're ready. You're ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, ready, ready for, for the story. Anecdotes. Yeah. They were filming Escape from Alcatraz when we were there, and they were no on way. a set break. But we saw some of the actors. And my dad's like, "That's Clint Eastwood." And um, and did your dad pur- purposely plan the trip because Eastwood was going to no, be there? We were going to Alcatraz, and they were filming stuff. Did your dad lose his mind? Isn't Eastwood his guy? Isn't Eastwood like well, his here's the favorite thing. actor? This is what I remember now. I haven't checked with my dad lately. You know how those stories happen with your kids and they kind of balloon? Yeah. Eastwood might not have been there. It might have just been like Fred yeah. Ward. And then but, you wouldn't believe it. Dwight Gooden bought us dinner. Right. But that's the thing. So now in 2024, I'm like, Eastwood was there. Maybe he wasn't. But yeah. as far as I'm concerned, now Eastwood was there. But they were definitely filming the movie. Um, but I've been to Alcatraz a bunch of times. We talked about it when we did the Axe Murderer movie. Um, the Alcatraz movie itself, that's all prison. We got to get out of here. It's pretty slow. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's quite rewatchables worthy, but even that one, I've probably watched what eight times. Like oh, yeah, the, when it's on, you're like, oh shit. All right. I'll, I'll watch when they make, they're going to make the dummies like, geology shit in Alcatraz. Right. Cause he's scraping yeah. through the rock. Like really, like uh really consistently. I, uh, I actually grew up down the street from a prison. The Eastern state penitentiary in Ooh. Philadelphia is just down the street from, from where I grew up. It's it no longer in, in use. It hasn't been for quite a time, a long time, but any field trips th- with the, with the grades or anything like well, grade four so field trip to the, now they do haunted houses there. Now they do, uh, haunt, they, so they do like the Eastern haunted Eastern state penitentiary. And it's like a huge attraction now. Guess what? Probably haunted. Think about all the people that die in a penitentiary. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And die in ways that they probably weren't a hundred percent psyched about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, so we have we've established we love prison movies. We love Den of Thieves. We did that movie pre-COVID. We did oh, that yeah. in person with Shay. I mean, that was one of those almost immediately became we got to do this on the show. I don't I think that movie had been out 2 years. The other piece of this is our guy Jamie Lannister. Mm-hmm. Who I'm just going to say this theory now. If his name was like Nick Walden, I think he's a bigger star. I think, I think his name actually hurt his career. It's so I, I don't even fine. know how to say it now. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a who is the most famous person with a name that you have to blink twice to like remember. I I still can't say it. And, and he's in 
one of my favorite prison movies the last 20 years, and he was in Game of Thrones, one of the great greatest shows of all time. And it's like Nikolai Coster Waldo. Is that how you say it? But if you were like, if it was Nick Walker, you'd be like, this guy is huge. Yeah. His name was Paul Walker. R.I.P. Paul Walker. Yeah. It was like a just a quickie, memorable, nice. His name was Chris Evans. Is his career a little bit different? I don't know. I always felt like that the name, even seeing him in this, and he's got this whole background. He's you know, he's Danish. Is he Dan- yeah. Danish, right? Um, he's Danish. And uh, he's got the little accent, and you can feel the accent a little bit in a couple of the scenes in this movie. But, man, I always thought that guy was really good. I thought he was excellent as Jamie Lannister, too. He's also, he brings, like, a real weird, like, he has, like, a soulfulness once he turns into money. Like, there's still, like, a lot going on behind the eyes. And I think he has, like, a really cool physical presence in this movie that's pretty unique. Like, when we, I was trying to do casting what-ifs in my head, and I have one for you, but... yeah. I don't know. It's not like I, I know that some people might be like, this guy doesn't, you know, he just has like a, he seems like a, his accent strained, but I thought he did a great job in this. Me too. So he's in Thrones for the entire 2010s. Yeah. He's in Oblivion with Tom Cruise, 2013. He's in The Other Woman, which is a, a beloved movie with my wife and daughter, 2014. He does two prison movies in 17, Small Crimes and Shot Collar. And Shot Collar, yeah. I think, became the one that. Was enduring. And then Small that Crimes was, is pretty good, though. That was kind of his moment, though. It kind of came and went. It reminded me. I feel like every decade there's a guy who's awesome in a signature TV show, and we just assume big things are going to happen. I think the I think the Waldo Assange could could happen. Well, I was going to give you the guy from the 2000s. There's a specific okay. guy that I'm like, I still kind of can't believe it didn't happen for him. And maybe there were other reasons. Maybe there were some reasons off the court. Off field reasons, okay. Sawyer from Lost. Oh yeah, well he and he he's popped. He's he's hung around. He, like he's been in different shows. Like, he's he's, done, done, he's been fine. I just yeah. don't. I'm not quite positive why he wasn't like an A list movie star. Great right. name. Yeah, <laughs> Craig, you, Josh Holloway. Yeah. Josh Holloway. Craig, did yeah. you watch Lost? I did. Yeah. Didn't you think Sawyer at some point like could? What was the difference between Sawyer and Brad Pitt? Was it like was it like a sizable chasm? He well, was definitely like the first crush that I remember. Like my friends that were girls having growing up, every girl was into every him. fucking woman Sawyer. loved Sawyer. Like yeah. loved him. Like Mallory would probably if if he snapped his fingers right now, Mallory's probably <laughs> out of her house, leaving Halo and Adam behind. I think I think it's a wrap. Um, but yeah, so sometimes it just- Mal drive by in the <laughs> Sorry, Mal. Pod. Mal's nodding. You think she's like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every decade, there's somebody on an awesome show. I, I always felt, I don't think Jan, John Slattery should have been an A-plus lister, but when he was on Mad Men, I was like, man, what kind of movie career is this guy going to yeah, have? And then he, he did. He was in he some good stuff. had an awesome career of playing variations on his Mad Men character in right. awesome movies. I was in Spotlight specifically, but- yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so sometimes you can get pigeonholed by the character to some. I think that was a big hurdle for John Hamm. That's why he leaned into the comedy and uh, started hosting SNL. And then he's a bridesmaids. And then he kind of was able to eventually break out of it. But sometimes you have that one character and you're just kind of stuck. Aaron with it. Paul, I feel like, has suffered from that a little bit. Oh, yeah. I would yeah, say Aaron I mean, Paul's the number one f- for that. I guess so. I mean, Aaron Paul also is on Westworld and works really consistently. He just hasn't had a character as biz- big as Jesse Pinkman. Sometimes it's just like it. If it was easy to just come up with like ten characters, like more people would be Tom Hanks. But it's like sometimes you just get that one part. I mean, you can make the argument that Cranston's never going to be bigger than Breaking Bad. You know what I mean? And he's worked pretty consistently. But that's. But big- the thing is, when you have like that part, or you're Gandolfini's part in The Sopranos, like it almost the rest is. Does it even? It's gravy. Yeah. You're just working at that point. It's like you would take Hunter after the fourth take Hunter. <laughs> That's what I'm just coasting. <laughs> it's like what else? What else can he do? Like, yeah, I, he I can mess e- around I, with Tyler Parker, do this, do this NBA tweet. podcast thing. Yeah, it's yeah. like what, what? What's left? So this movie was written and directed by Rick Roman who, uh who used this prison was the same prison where he filmed the movie called Felon with Val Kilmer, which was kind of like. It's like the brothers McMullen. This is she's the one where it's like it was the tester for the bigger budget of the same version of the movie. Um, I'm kind of into this, though. I think more filmmakers should get to do this where they're like, I'm going to go make the JV version of what I'm about to like. And then when I but you just got to let me make this again in four years. 
it's Craig says this to me all the time about the Ringer Fantasy Show. He's like, "What if we redid this, but not with Heifetz? We just go bigger. <laughs> we just get larger." Craig, Craig have you with, ever with figured Nicolai that out? Coster Waldo, with with Nicolai Coster Waldo <laughs> instead of Heifetz. Would that work? We only work? need one Danny on the show. We've known that for four years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's Craig, Nick, and Danny. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? NCW? Um, no budget for this movie that I could find. It made $3.4 million. No review for Roger Ebert, but I have a no. special gift for you. I didn't tell okay. you we were doing this. You know, it's 2024. We're trying to uh, be the cutting edge of the rewatchables. People say we do too many old movies. People say, you know, they don't want the podcast to get old on them. We're trying to do cutting edge stuff. I went in a chat GPT. I, I knew you were going to do this eventually. This is really creepy. <laughs> and, I, and I asked chat GPT what Roger Ebert would have thought of Shot Caller. Is this a sin what we're doing right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> so chat, Ch chat GPT said, Roger Ebert, known for his insightful film criticism, might have appreciated the intense character development and gripping narrative of Shot Caller. Yeah. He would have likely praised the film's exploration of themes such as the consequences of choices and the transformation of its protagonist. Ebert must have, might have also commented on the performances, particularly Nikolai Coster-Waldo's portrayal of the lead character's evolution. Yeah. This is all pretty solid. However, he might have also critiqued any elements of the film that felt overly sensationalized or lacking in subtlety. I don't know, that felt a little AI-ish. Overall, <laughs> Ebert might have given Shot Caller a positive review, acknowledging its strengths while offering constructive criticism. That's fair. Given the film's critical acclaim and the potential for Ebert to appreciate its themes and performances, he might have awarded it a rating in the range of three to three and a half stars out of four. Chat GPT. I, I, I think three and a half out of four would be a high ranking for I think Ebert. he's three. I think Raj okay. goes three. Yeah. Craig, what did you think of AI Roger Ebert? Uh, you know what? Not bad. Uh, it's probably sacrilege, but look, I'm an AI right now. You don't even know that. <laughs> it was interesting. I don't yeah. know if we would do it for every post 2016 movie, there. but There's I something I, there. Something. Yeah, I just think if you're gonna do it, we gotta like really break the seal and be like, dear Chat GPT, like, what would money from Shot Caller have thought of January sixth? <laughs> <laughs> What does money from Shot Caller think of Q Shaman? <laughs> All right, most rewatchable scene. Money goes to the Burnthal party. We haven't talked Amazing. about Burnthal yet. Let's save it. Let's save okay. it like it's like a dessert wine that it's I'm going to bust it's a out. It's palate cleanser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's save it. Because I don't know if we've done a really good Burnthal movie since Wayne Jenkins. something special in the back the chef's been holding on to. <laughs> Have we done Burnthal since Jenkins started? Um, we did something he was in because I was like, I can't do Jenkins because Johnny, Johnny Burns is in this. Okay. All right. So first we watched the scene, money goes to the party. There's just a lot of girls and a lot of people who had just gotten out of jail. Um, not a party you and I would probably be invited to. Oh, uh, like you don't think you go to any parties where you meet the every tweaker south of Folsom knows who you are guy. <laughs> right. And, and where they say, they point it to the girls in the room and you can literally do whatever you want. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Um, he goes to the bathroom because he gets freaked out. Our guy who we don't have a lot of history on at this point comes back out. One of the girls is naked. And then he's like, Hey, you know, put on your clothes, like blah, blah, blah. He's like, what if we went and got it's a Jamie. drink? Yeah. And they're like, Oh, our guy, Jamie Lannister, maybe maybe he's a good guy down deep. Like I like how he handled this, comes out and somebody's shooting at him and we're off. But Here it's comes also, shot caller. it's a cool kind of like, I mean, I obviously if you'd seen the trailer or if you had known anything about this movie, you knew you were going to get the whole trajectory of this character from Jacob to money. But when he walks into the party, everybody is like kissing the ring and they're like, oh my God, that's him, that's yeah. him. But then when you see him personally, he's obviously got a lot of anxiety and 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 is going through something. So it really is like a cool twist because he's not, he's not running shit. He's just sort of pretending to. Yeah, one of the cool things, I, how we talked about the structure before, how we bounce back and forth. They set up in this scene, his stature mm -hmm. in this whole prison community but then we go backwards where he has no stature at all well actually we see him as a stockbroker and yeah. you know on double date and then we see him going into prison with zero stature and we see 
later in the movie when he meets Bernthal's character and Bernthal clearly is higher in the pecking order than him. And it's basically like, I, I own you now because you're like, you're my drug mule. Yeah. Right. And then it just flips. And so, you know, we're constantly about, oh, he was here. And you're just watching like the seesaw of somebody. Um, next rewatchable scene I have is the double date into the car accident. I, Dirty Secret CR. A good car accident scene in a movie is always going to get me. I don't know why. Does that make me a bad person? I don't know. I had forgotten his crime this time around. So I was like, oh, this is a long, long car driving scene. And then like I real I remembered like, oh, they had the other bottle of wine. You know, he was gonna blow a 1.0 or 0.10. It's a tough one. What what do you think memorable car accidents in movies? Because singles is a good one. Singles when, is a good one. Kira Cedric nope. and Campbell Scott. I like car accidents where nobody gets hurt, but it's like a fun car accident. Whiplash like, has a pretty good one. Whiplash, oh, no whiplash. country for old men has a good one. At oh, the no end. country is a great one. Yeah. That one is like loud as shit. You're like, oh my God, I feel like I got hit by a car. It's not even a car accident. It's the surprise car accident. Yeah. It's always the T-bone out of nowhere. Yeah. The uh, Pulp Fiction, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can factor that one in there, potentially. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's a that's just a good scene. It's well shot. Um, I also like that we start with the typical double date, like the kind of double date. You know, you you probably had in Portland with Chuck and his wife. Just a yeah. nice, nice dinner, some friends having a drink, and then all of a sudden he's in jail in his shot collar. Can um, I ask you guys a question? How many yeah. bottles of wine, if you're on a double date, four of you, how many bottles of wine would need to be ordered for you to blow a point one? Three? I, mean, I think it sounds like they did I bet a cocktail each and two bottles of wine. So that's a cocktail and three or four glasses each. Yeah, so you're the double, wine guy. Double date, that's a two and a half hour probably dinner, right? Mm -hmm. At least two. If you show up before the b before the table's ready and everybody gets cocktails, so that's the cocktail plus the two bottles of wine. That's two glasses of wine for everybody at the table. So that's three drinks over the course of three hours. I would say that's the 1.0. And yeah. maybe he like, the waiter came over, maybe he had like three and a half. Yeah. 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 You need more than three glasses of wine, I feel like, to blow a point one. I think that they had a I think they had a margarita before they got started. Yeah. Or like they had like a something. Or maybe they have like a little like a shot of a Moro afterwards. <laughs> because there's food too, which can kind of dilute some of the effect of it too. But um Jacob goes to jail, I have as the next scene, which has a great pep talk slash warning speech from his lawyer. Uh-huh. You'll be with the big boys. They will test you got a lot to say about this lawyer you got to stand up for yourself because once you get marked in there it'll never end how does this yeah. guy have all this inside prison info he's so like fucking, this guy is he's like adrian wojarowski of prison if you've got all this intel on prison shouldn't you have been better at keeping me out <laughs> right what why were we because my favorite scene you just skipped it but it's like when jacob gets his plea deal and the lawyer looks like he just got like reamed out by his boss. He's like, oh man, I don't think I can even negotiate here. <laughs> <You Right. know? laughs> and it's, it's like, what if Dan Hurley was doing this for the UConn? Like, I think we're going to get our ass kicked. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, like, what the hell, man? Give, give, like work with something here. He's like JJ Reddick on first take. You'll be with the big boys. He's just doing this whole monologue. He's breaking down what prison life's going to be like. I have no idea how he knows any of this. Uh, but it's a very important speech for for our guy uh, Jacob, Jacob because yeah. he's like, all right. Then he learns, don't cry the first day of prison. They go to bed. They're all in the bunks. And uh, as soon as the lights go out, the security guard walks away. And all of a sudden, like four guys hop on the crying guy. And, and they assault him, yeah. We've seen enough prison movies where we're just like, as soon as that guard goes away, you just know something awful is going to happen. I think it's like one thing I would say about this movie is that it's pretty artfully and tastefully done. Like, I, it's obviously got a lot of blood, but I don't think it's like excessively gory. Yeah. F for what it could have been. And that scene is like terrifying, but not like exploitative. It's really, it's, it's kind of cool how they do it. Yeah. They settle on, uh, on Jacob. Yeah. And he's just kind of listening. It's his POV. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I had, I watched this movie last night at my daughter's home and my daughter wanted to watch a movie and I was like, I got to watch shot caller. 
So she ended up watching with me and she was like on her phone, like not really watching, but then immediately got sucked in. Okay. And I don't think she'd ever seen a prison movie before. My daughter, for people listening, is 18 and a half. So it's not like, you know. Um, but and she's then my, also your daughter. So I'm kind of surprised you haven't been like. <laughs> we haven't, haven't subjected it's, her to some it's prison It's American movies. me night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so have you seen American History X yet? Uh, so then my wife came in and during that scene, my daughter was so con- I realized how innocent my daughter was. She was so confused. She was like, what are they doing? Are they beating him up? And I was like, no, it's actually way worse. And she's yeah. like, way worse. Like <laughs> they're having sex with him. And she was just so <laughs> horrified. <laughs> Why would they do that? Why don't the other people stop it? And I'm like, man, we got to start watching more prison <laughs> movies in the Simmons house. Um, it's basically the, it's, it's the underlying theme of every prison movie. Yeah, I, I think it's it's the terror that lurks in all of them. Yeah, yeah, among many other terrors. Um, but that leads to the big fight the next day when he bumps well, into that dude. Jacob, and that guy's now like, Jacob is like, I have to, I have to get associated with somebody here. I can't. You got to make your mark alone. Yeah. Plus, when somebody calls you Peckerwood, it's time to throw down. <laughs> yes. so that guy said to him, "Hey, Peckerwood." But Jacob bumps into him, right? Yeah, I think accidentally, but may, or yeah. maybe not accidentally. Or maybe not, yeah. Smart move. Won some respect. It was basically like, you know, we're doing, going through the draft stuff now. That was his combine right there. Uh-huh. He had yeah. all, the, all the scouts were there with their stopwatches. I would be more like Caleb Williams. I'd be like, I'm not working out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys have seen my tape. I'm not working out. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Now he is like, I got I to gotta get some tape on the board here. I got to show my dash off. Um Next one, the reveal that uh, our guy Bernthal, a.k.a. Shotgun, is a snitch on the outside. It's working for the other side. Yeah, it's man. Tough. Monica. They got Monica put away. He's got to get her out. It's tough. So there's some times in this movie where I feel like maybe some stuff got left on the cutting room floor, and we'll get to that. But the Bernthal thing where it's like when Shotgun's talking about his girlfriend who's obviously got busted on a drug trafficking uh, case. It's a scene it's missing. Just, it's great though, but like, cause it's like you just, shotgun's still kind of a weasel, but you kind of understand what's going on. Yeah. Plus it's Bernthal. I don't think there's a scenario where I'm not rooting for Bernthal in a movie, even when he's directly opposed to the hero in our movie that I'm watching right now. Right. And he's not a great guy. And I'm still like, ah, maybe you guys can work it out. It's Bernthal. He does a good, he has a couple scenes in here when the character's clearly going off the rails and he's using drugs, like he snorts cocaine in the car as he's driving, but his eyes are like super bloodshot and fucked up. And yeah, he changes his demeanor and he's just more fidgety and, and once untrusting. you know that shotgun is a snitch, if you go back to shotgun's party, you're like, Oh my God, that makes all this, like his nervous energy and his yeah. like try hardness makes so much sense here. Yeah. Um, Next rewatch, we'll see Money's First Murder. <laughs> Great slow-mo. One of the better slow-mos in, in, uh, in recent memory of uh, that moment when he's like, oh my God, I'm actually about to murder somebody and nails him. And then you hear Bottles' voice in the background going, the fact is we all started out as someone's little angel. And the fact is this place turns us into warriors or victims. Nothing in between can exist here. So this is when when money saves Herman, right? Saves the guy, the Mexican guy during the riot, right? No, I'm I'm going back earlier when they commit oh. their first murder of the guy in the cell. Oh, when him, him and, and the yeah, other guy when, throw that guy yeah, in there. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And he hears that voice about the warriors or victims. Really good speech. Good scene. Um, I really like the dad son scene when the son goes up. Lake Bell's son goes up to the room and it's like, you didn't send me a letter in seven years. And just the way uh, our guy Nikolai plays that scene, I think is really good. I like when he escapes from his hotel room. You don't know. It seems like he's going to hang himself, but it he does doesn't. for a second. You're it's like, he's, I wonder, yeah, yeah. It's really, and, and just the ability to like keep the, it's like a jail trick. He's obviously learned of like how to keep a, a window look closed, but be open right. kind of thing. Yeah. The riot's great. Just great. I mean, all riots, all riots in a good prison movie are great. This one's really good. It's also awesome how, like, I love when there's something, a riot where someone tells him some of the rules, like, make sure you go in the middle of right. where the cameras, 
get down on the ground when they tell you to, and otherwise you should be okay. And he knows when he when he looks up at the camera, he's like, shit, I got caught. Craig, you took notes during that scene, right? Like you gotta stay in the middle in any riot. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very strategic, but I'm I'm plan we're all kind of planning our attack suit, so you be ready. You gotta yeah. you gotta set just just give a nice little look, find out where the cameras are and just stay where the masses are, and that's usually how to do it. Um Jacob meets the beast, played by our guy Holt Holt McCallany. Unrecognizable in this. Uh yeah, I mean the beard is incredible. And also just like it's so visually striking the guys in shoe all wearing just like just white boxers and chucks. It's such a sick look. Yeah. I got to start bringing that back. You're going to just, why don't you test drive it around the house? See what Phoebe just thinks. See if he- <laughs> Phoebe. Get a couple tats. Yeah. Just ready to roll. Um, the beast says those cops, they need to understand that we run the show. Gives yeah. them the whole speech. Like we're actually running the show. I have some questions about that for later. And then you like to read a good collection of psychology. All of a sudden, he turns into like your buddy from book club. <laughs> Thanks, LeVar Burton. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Two more scenes. Jacob kills Shotgun. Yeah. This is everything you ever want from an action movie scene, right? It's so good. It's a great fight. I just like, I don't know whether it's aged the best or the worst, but the the shank stab seems so awful. Like the lots and lots and lots and lots of little stabs kind of. Yeah. It's just such a tough way to go. And, and you know, shotgun just being like, I'm no punk. I'm no punk. Well, our guy Bernthal dials up the death scene. Yeah. I think he, he asked the director, like, what do you think? Like five seconds, 15, 25? How long do you want? And Rick Roman Wall was like, do like 30 seconds of dying. How about that? Yeah. And and maybe like at near the end, you could just start spitting out dark blood. Berthal's like, got it. <laughs> and just goes for it for literally a half minute. He's dying. Oh, 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 spitting and mumbling. And it's really good. Last one, the showdown. Him and the beast. I'm leaving out the, uh, when the, the gun, I uh, had the gun, the, the that gun whole scene's coming desert. up. Yeah, that's in, coming in, up later. In Palm Desert. Yeah. The showdown of him and Beast and Beast just immediately knowing, you know, that he was involved. He wants to feel him out to find out exactly what he knew. How does it feel to be the walking dead? And then, of course, brings up the family. Nobody's touching my family. And then one of the great get out of the handcuffs tricks. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he did it either. You, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Is this, is this, was there a missing scene? I know he goes to the convenience store, gets the razor blade, gets the every, all the stuff, but how does he conceal it is the only thing I'm trying to figure well, out. He, no, they have that split, that like really short scene where he's basically shitting out. Right. That's where it was. So when okay. he went back in, somehow he rammed that way up his ass. It's got better and better ramming, you know, <laughs> contraband up his ass. God. Um, but really, good. I'm going to give this the great shot Gordo, the tail end when he's standing over him, covered in blood covered in with blood. the sunlight behind him. Really nice. My, mine is not that much different. It's the inter- It's the first shot of the beast. It's like coming out of the, right. of the indoors and like you see this one guy in the cages and he's just like, I run this whole fucking thing. It's an interesting fight scene because it seems like they're just going to go at it like Rocky II no, style. I think it's amazing that they it's over so fast. It's a Because if you were doing right? that, if you were money, you're like, this has to end in five seconds or I'm dead. Like it, it, this is, I have to, I have to catch this guy flat footed or I'm, I'm, it's over. My daughter watching it was like, wait, what the, like, it's like, cause it's, you just assume we've seen so many movies that it's going to go two, three minutes. Somebody's going to have the upper hand. The other guy and is like, so you don't understand. He's been stuffing things in his rectum for years. <laughs> yeah, so he's they, gotten remember, really good at it. <laughs> remember when he was on the toilet, uh, but he gets them and that's it. What do you have for most rewatchable? Uh, I think it's the money kills the beast scene just because it's so visually overwhelming and like him being covered in blood and these white shorts and kind of then telling the prison guard like what's what, like how things are going to work going forward. Um, so it's either that or it's uh, it's it's money's party. It's like his welcome home party. It's just such like a crazy like world to be dropped in feet first. And meanwhile, we're in that world a lot because it feels very similar to the training day. 
Yes. That house that he's in, it feels very yeah. similar to two or three Fast and Furious movies that we've had where they're in like those kind of things. Um, I have the riot. I think the riot is just really excellent. Good. I love how uh, I love when they're all passing the shanks and they're like digging up the dirt and pulling stuff out and just the, just how they're getting the contraband ready to go to actually fight with. And then um, I like how they line up with the other gang and then they head toward the other side. They realize what's happening and they're then like, it's just go. chaos. Yeah. yeah, it's um, chaos. And then him saving his, uh, his buddy is a good one, but uh, I think it's a really strong one. What Craig, what did you have for most rewatchable? I think the scene at the end, I think that whole setting of like those cages. In the middle that, of the desert. In like the that, middle of the yeah. desert. Like if those were in Venice, you could charge like a hundred bucks a month for people to work out in those. Like those are so cool. <laughs> it's a great great business yeah. plan. Shit the shot collar cages. That's right. People would absolutely go in those cages and film themselves, pull up bars, weights. That would work. You don't need all that expensive material, brother. <laughs> all right. We'll get on that. We'll launch that business. All right, CR, what stage the best? What do you got? I love it when getting caught is part of the plan. Oh. And I would like to yeah. call this the the John Doe has the upper hand. I love when a guy is like, wait, why is he getting caught? Oh, it was all part of the plan. He was going to go back in to get the beast. And he's like thrown his life away, basically. And now he runs the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> it's so insane. But I what fucking... Are- What other movies have done that? Well, uh, Seven did that, obviously. That's the John Doe. uh, Joker does that in Batman uh, in Dark Knight. Um, You know, I think that uh, you could say that Hannibal Lecter does that in Silence of the Lambs, where he allows himself to get caught so that he can he can he can do stuff. So like they do it in Face Off with Travolta, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Great call. I had my number one was the concept of a shot caller. Yeah. Who's got the keys, man? So like in football, we have these like general terms like offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. In general, in sports, we have all these terms that we've just had forever. Like in baseball, it's like the closer and then everyone else is just a reliever. And I always was saying how we should call the eighth inning guy the cooler. Shot caller is great. Like why is an offensive coordinator just the shot caller? Or there should be a special, because you know how now they're getting so many offensive coaches where it's like passing game coordinator, run game coordinator. It's like, why don't we get a guy who's shot caller, but he only calls the shot plays where they're going for the end zone? You know what I mean? Like that could, that would be a great use of shot caller. Right. Or like, like the GM, maybe the GM is just the name (laughs) is the shot caller. Or we say like. Bob Kraft is the owner of the Patriots, but he's saying Elliot Wolf is the shot caller. Yeah. Well, that would be a good way of determining like who actually runs the team. So it's like, even though there's a GM and all these other people, it's like, yeah, yeah. but you know, Daryl's the shot caller on the Sixers, you know? Right. So like in the Celtics, is Wick the shot caller or is it Brad Stevens? Like, I, I would just want to know. I'd want to know who all the shot callers were. Um I just want everyone to know I'm still the shot caller of the ringer until further notice, but I, it, I could get, somebody could come after me like the beast and just, just take it from me. I'm ready every day. Who's yeah. coming? Ben Solak walks up to you wearing boxers. <laughs> He's covered in tats. It's just like, Ben, why'd you want to see me? And all, all of a sudden I'm on the ground. Uh, I also had the out- outdoor box cage cells that we mentioned earlier uh, for what stage the best. And I also think that has to be Den of Thieves, Benny Hanna award scene stealing location. It's just that wide shot of the six cages. It's so fucking cool. It's incredible. Speaking of little mini awards and what's age the best, the uh, the heroin balloon in the ramen, big kahuna burger award, best use of food and drink. I love when they <laughs> smuggle in stuff yeah. in the food or the toothpaste is always great in prison. I had a uh, money money's cheesesteak that he's about to get into with him and Howie, but yeah, the mm. the ramen one is really good. What stage the best movies where guys get shot when they have a bulletproof vest on and you think they're dead for a split second and it's a little viewer trick? Crossed with movies where characters have to use prepaid cell phones. Yeah. Like my Pythagorean formula is if those two things are in a movie, I'm probably going to like it. Just those two. I mean, it could be about anything else, but if I have those two things, I'm in. Also, just Howie's level of loyalty to Beast, where Beast is like, 
get out of this car and take a bus now? And he's just like, you got it, but whatever you want. Man. Oh, yeah, to mean to Jacob, not the beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, to the money, yeah, right. Another what's age the best. The Hanlins living in Pasadena, <laughs> and then he gets caught, <laughs> and then just a little subtle that now they're in Eagle Rock. I thought it was just get a good LA geography. So I sold the house in Pasadena, live in a little two bedroom in Eagle Rock. It's near the old Oinkster. Yeah, but they probably um, yeah, we're doing... renting for now, trying to get back on our feet. Yeah, my husband he actually wound up getting another seven concurrent years for participating <laughs> yeah. in a prison riot. Yeah. <laughs> my... You think that could... little 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 small talk at the Montessori pickup? You know, yeah, <laughs> we're looking at places now in San Bernardino, but we'll, we'll come back. You know, J Jacob's rising through the brand, so we're really hoping that you know <laughs> he has a chance to be shot caller. We're gonna find out a little later if he runs meth in all of California. You know, maybe we'll go to Harvard Westlake. Uh -huh. What else? What what other what stage the best you have? Um, I had just like the little, like I said, the little details, all the vocabulary of prison stuff, but also like when Kutcher, the RMR hardware character, when he first gets uh when he first gets Jacob on parole and he's like taking all the pictures of the tats and was like, Oh, I thought you might have a shamrock. Like, cause just just yeah. like the little details like that are really, really, really awesome. And then also Bernthal's peak in this movie is when uh, he goes and picks up Jacob and Howie at that restaurant. And, you know, Jacob's just like, I'm not supposed to be seen with anybody validated like I am in broad fucking daylight right now. Like, you know, he's made this mistake of hooking up with with money on the outside. Yeah. And and Brenthal goes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love the way he says that. <laughs> I had I had Bernthal and what shades, what stage the best with an exclamation point next to him. And then I had Bernthal movies in the Wayne Jenkins era where we've been doing the Wayne Jenkins character really for almost two years. Yeah. And now whenever Bernthal is doing Wayne Jenkins, who he created because it was his character, it's just like seven times more enjoyable for me. I know. And that, and that was one of those scenes <laughs> where it's like he became Wayne Jenkins a yeah, couple yeah, times. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's age the best prison movies? What's age the best... The 2010s and Lake Bell. Speak on it. Really important how to made it, make it in America character, early 2010s HBO character. A um, lot of Dave Jacoby conversations over the years about Lake Bell. Always enjoyed her work and a bunch of different things. She's good. She's got this nothing part in this movie, but I believe in she does what she's doing in it. And she does a good job. And, it's a lot of like, well, what would you do if you were her? Yeah, would you give up the, on this guy? He's not even writing letters. Like, why would you even stay married to him? Honorable mention, most rewatchable scene is their first coffee together after he gets out. It's good. And you find out that he hasn't communicated with her in seven years. <laughs> well, that's another Michael Mann scene, right? Like, he loved diners. He loved awkward conversations between people that used to be together or thinking about being together where there's like, small cups of coffee. And, yeah. Um, I have to ask, this is, uh, I didn't notice this. So she's supposed to, is she supposed to be dating anybody in this era? Like when she They shied away. It seems like she's been broken from a dating standpoint, which I, I understand. Think, you know, I, I got to say it might be a deal breaker for me. E even if I got to like go out with Lake Bell and I'm like, so like, what's your ex do? And it's just like, wow, he's kind of rising through the ranks of the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know what? It is. I got a crazy early meeting tomorrow, but this has been awesome. <laughs> and can you do me a favor? Can you take the battery out of your cell phone and break that? <laughs> he's in prison, but it's actually it's been good. Like yeah. he's, you he's know, he's number so two right now done. in the AB. <laughs> you know so much about human psychology now. I like his letter to his son for what's age the best. Make your mark on this world. Be your mother's protector, no matter what you hear about me. Keep moving forward. Don't look back. I might just email that to Ben tonight with no context. I will say um, that if you ever write your kid a letter and the other parent is like, we thought you were going to commit suicide, maybe not a great letter to send. Right. Well, especially then signing it, your father, with like yeah. that sincerely. <laughs> Love. Miss you. No, none of that. Just your oh, father. Oh, God. I have two more things. A couple of phenomenal mustaches in this movie. Incredible. Really peaking with the final, the mustache finals of Jacob has a couple different iterations. He goes big, bushy, goatee at one point. He goes 
mustache, big Viking arrow for mustache with the yeah. chin. Yeah. But then he settles on that horseshoe mustache, which we talked about before we started taping. I, I think you, me, and Craig were all jealous of it. Like, it just, you really have to grow it in all the right spots. It's got to have the right kind of girth. Benjamin Bratt's got a pretty good stash in this well, one, Well, right? so he's in the finals as well. Whatever, he's got this giant, bushy, kind of crazy mustache. Good stuff, yeah. Those are two. There's some other good ones, too. Um, just quickly, I did some research on this. Well, there's two different things on research. One is just the hierarchy of the prison. Mm -hmm. So money goes in, he's a, he's a wood. Wood is like... Pecker wood. Yeah. You're yeah, you're basically a white guy. You're not really in any of the better gangs yet. Um <laughs> not in the better gangs. Yeah, you're it's like in the social network where the, the uh what's his name? Andrew Garfield character is trying to get into that special club. To the that, houses, yeah. That yeah, Zuckerberg can't get into. He's like, Oh, I made it to the next level. Shotgun was a pen one, which is a gang member, a gang called public enemy number one. Yeah. That's below Aryan Brotherhood. So in the pecking order, that's kind of like the MLS and Aryan Brothers, like the Premier League. <laughs> Ripper. <laughs> Just, can you imagine Premier League comms guys right now? Be like, Bill Simmons uh, said yeah. that we were like the Aryan Brotherhood of world football. <laughs> Love some of the stuff you said in Shot Collar, but just uh, wanted, to, wanted to clarify a couple things. Ripper, his roommate that he gets when he moves to the, the special two-man cells. Yeah. He was a Nazi lowrider. So eventually money becomes number three to in the Red Aryan Wood brother and the beast, right? Right. And Redwood goes to death row because he kills the guy. So yeah. now it's beast. Now money's moved up to number two. I loved Redwood. Would have loved to have got a couple more minutes. Would have loved. The, yeah. in the TV series, I think Redwood gets his own backstory and all that yeah. stuff. So, but for whatever reason, uh, the AB is the, is the highest in the gang hierarchy. So they usually, whoever is the number one person there in Brotherhood, they run at least a lot of the prison. Yeah. Right. And when money gets out, he's the only guy from Aaron Brotherhood on the outside. Who's, yes. He's the highest ranking guy, which is why he's treated with such deference. I will say that what's aged the worst has been my search history for the last three days. <laughs> Mine as well. <laughs> and, uh, I just want to let you guys know it was just for research. Yeah. I, the eye in the sky up there is like, yeah. why is the rewatchable thinking about joining the Aryan Brotherhood? A lot of Department of Justice uh, yeah. press releases. <laughs> and then last but not least, um, here are all the books that were on Money's prison bookshelf near the end. Tell me how many of these you read, CR. Okay. The Book of Five Rings, The Art of War. I have that one. The Holy Bible, New King James Version, The Selected Words of, of Nietzsche, The Prince by Machiavelli, Deep Black Jihad, For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway, Aztec Revenge, Of Minded Matter. People aren't sure if that was a real yeah, book. Yeah, I think they think because it's like written by a guy who worked on the movie. Yeah. And then The Human Animal by Karen Sequoia is the one he was reading. Got to say, front to back, only read Hemingway. Mm. Only read For Whom the Bell Tolls. I've dabbled in some of the other ones, though. Any other What's Age the Best for You? No? Uh, no. The Butch's Girlfriend Award for a weak link of the film. This Two things bug me about this movie, and I guess one of them could be in What's Age the Worst and one could be here, but... One is he becomes a gangbanger in prison, just a, a whiff too fast. Yeah. Now he's in prison for a while and they're cutting some stuff. So like if this is happening over the course of a year and a half, that makes sense. A year and a half is a long time. But I would say for a weak link, I don't understand why he's so anxious to cut all cords with his family. Like, especially when he gets like the extra seven years and he just says to his wife, it's over, forget I exist. I think he knows that to survive, it's not going to just be seven years. To get, to get, because to basically to secure his own safety, he's going to have to do things in the prison that will probably extend his sentence. Counter, is there maybe a more diplomatic way that's not as hurtful to tell your, uh, I mean, could, son, could he like, just have said, like, just so you know, like, I have to join a gang to be 
like to like, yeah, maybe you don't want to put that in writing, but you could also say, Hey, I love you guys, but I've passed the point of no return in here. Yeah. And they, we are not going to be a big happy family again. I would urge you to move on, but my love will always be there. But just to do the it's over, forget I exist is pretty tough. What'd you have for Butch's girlfriend? Um, just I, I find the dynamics of the gun deal, the like sort of crucial gun deal and like all the stuff between the two Mexican gangs and yeah. like how shotgun is working with Herman and whether or not shotgun is like that gets a little bit convoluted or compressed. And so I just would have liked to have understood what was going on a little bit more. Ultimately, all you need to know is that money wants to get put back in jail. Yeah, I, I almost put this for Butch's girlfriend that um, the actual payoff, big shootout, gun deal, all that stuff, it's a little slow. And I don't think it 100% works. Yeah. It's not like the strongest part of the movie. You kind of just want to get back to him and the beast. And it's like he throws that guy, he throws the Emery Cohen character out of the cab. And like when they get out of the truck, the guys are just like, where is he? You know, like it, yeah. It's just, it's kind of, it's just a little rushed. It gets yeah. a little sloppy. I'm with you. What's age the worst? His accent is tough a couple times during this movie where you're like, oh, that guy's clearly not from yeah. California. It kind, of, it kind of breaks a little bit. Yeah. Um, as you know, one of my real passions with TV and movie culture is terrible soccer scenes. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for this. <laughs> um, Joshua. <laughs> there's an alternate universe where professionally... I don't know what I'm doing to make ends meet nine to five, but my passion is really at nights just finding soccer scenes from movies and TV shows that are terrible. And I have a whole <laughs> website where I do commentary on them. And there's also an Instagram account. The soccer is, movie dad. Yeah. There's some, uh, some of the worst soccer scenes. I don't know why nobody can figure this out, but they're always filmed where there's like only three people running. There's a, a spot in this one where, they're setting up like a shot he takes and there's just like four people standing on the sides in the background who are supposed to be playing in the game. And then he makes a whatever terrible shot. And it's just, I don't know why they can't figure this out. Soccer Zoe, should be the easiest one to figure that figure did out. Did Zoe watch this scene? We were appalled, I, but there's <laughs> been worse. Like you watch like any lifetime movie or some of the other ones, like there, there's appalling soccer all over the place. I also think we left a huge comic moment on the table with like, couldn't money go to one of Joshua's soccer matches? <laughs> Just in the cage? <laughs> <laughs> no, when he's like out briefly when he's out. <laughs> oh, that's a great point. I didn't like, even think of that. Couldn't he go to one soccer match where he's I just- like the idea of them bringing the cage to the soccer field. Oh so he can watch. <laughs> like Animal Lecter? <laughs> he's, he's just pacing boxers. and doing pull-ups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they put it behind one of the nets. <laughs> Way to go, Josh. Track back. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, Man you got to take that guy out. <laughs> yeah. To kill him. Um, more would say the worst. Things I don't love about prison movies. Really narrow it down to, we talked about the, um, the, the sexual assault stuff, which is just a staple. The sticking things up your ass as, as contraband, I just... Just it's rough. I know we have to do it. I know we're trying to be as realistic as possible, but man, it's a t- yeah. I, and I then like just handing it off, like here, shotgun. Here's the balloon. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's been my ass for nine hours. Like it's you just watching. You're like, oh man, is he gonna get hepatitis B? <laughs> you think that's what he's worried about? <laughs> yeah, but probably not. Uh, any other what's age worse? Uh, the parole board. Like when they just are like the 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 obviously corrupt prison guard is just like he's just been a great citizen ever since yeah. he got to the shoe and they're just like sounds good you're out <laughs> right <laughs> good luck yeah it doesn't look like you've gone under any negative transformation since you've been yeah. in the prison system you've added Enjoy twenty society. tattoos you have Pat yeah. Riley's hair with a horseshoe mustache you've put on twenty pounds of muscle yeah and everyone's afraid of you good luck I think there's also a couple of scenes. Uh, where you can tell, I don't know whether like when we didn't really even talk about the basketball scene that much, but what, uh, you can see that uh, Nikolai has money's physique, but like is wearing a suit or wearing like a, a t-shirt or whatever. Yeah. Like trying to hide that. He's, like he has it like he yeah. would. Yeah. I did think about some, how they did some of that stuff, like Bernthal's hair. He has shaved hair. Yeah. And, and then, then it's like grown out so that they might, they definitely put some thought on how they film some of the stuff. Um, 
the Ruffalo Hannah Rubinick Partridge Overacting Award. I thought I like Omari Hardwick in this movie, but he really goes for it in that one scene when he's in the car with Benjamin Bratt and they're talking about Yeah, brother. Flashbacks about when he got shot that time. And yeah, Omari Hardwick's like, I know I'm in power, but on stars and people love that show and it's probably not that realistic. I can win a best actor Oscar, but if it's in play, this is the clip right here for me. And sure. he really, really goes for it. And he, he I feel like he died. He actually underacts a little too much, but he's dialing it up. He's really going for it in this. I scene. think it's either this or it's Bernthal's death scene. <laughs> Was there a better title for this movie? No way. Somebody suggested we change best quote to the Can You Dig It Award for most memorable quote. I think for me, it would be you got your rules and we got the gang's rules and theirs matter. That's a good one. I like The World Went On Without Us, Holmes. The guy in the flower shop. Yeah, it's pretty that's good. right. Yeah. yeah. It was in here 17 years. The World Went On Without Us, Holmes. What do you got for the CR thinks Luke Wilson could have been Harrison <laughs> Ford Hottest Take Award? I have that this movie is amazing the way it's structured, but if you want it to achieve maximum rock bottom, yeah, it should have been linear. Like, see, we start with him as a uh, successful stockbroker, and we're like, what's going on? This is like 15, 17 minutes of this guy just kind of having a family in Pasadena. Yeah. And then the car accident. And then you're like, okay, but he'll get like a plea deal or something, right? And it just gets worse. It just gets and worse, worse and worse. So you're yeah. saying they should do the Godfather Coda cut with yes. Shot Collar. Shot Collar Coda cut. Rick Roman Wass said that, like, he was like, I'm not comparing the two things, but like, the, the like, it, this is kind of like the prison version of the Deer Hunter, which has the same sort of similar structure. Yeah. But I just think that, like, if you wanted to maximize how hard you hit rock bottom, you would show normal guy going into prison. Interesting. Because you already know he gets out when you start the movie. Craig, what would the millennials have wanted from this? Like straight linear or would they have wanted to go back and forth? Uh, well, I, it's definitely grabbier to start the way it does. Uh, if it starts out with 15 minutes of him just being a stockbroker, that might make people get bored and click away. So I get it. Yeah, I'm with Craig. Casting what ifs, there are none. Part of the problems with doing movies from the last 10 years is that there's never enough intelligence on the movie. Um Best That Guy Award. The guy who plays Chopper, one Evan of the people Jones, that- man. Yeah, Evan yeah. Jones. Is Evan yeah. Jones, is, is he officially shed that guy status or is he still I Evan Jones? I think he's Jarhead, 8 Mile, Den of Thieves. Like, he's a great that guy. He's and a, I always have to look him up. No offense, but I just- Hall of like, Famer. What's the guy's name again? Yeah. Yeah, I'm with it too. All right, one Dion of, Waiters. One of the great Dion's we've had in a while. I, I'll just read you the three nominees I had. The Beast, Ripper, and Bottles. Those are my three <laughs> Dion Waiter nominees. And you didn't put Redwood in. Oh, Redwood should have been in there too. That's great. That's even better. Um, it's got to be Holt. It's got to be McCallan. I was going to say, I, I, yeah. I really was trying to figure out. a. It's like trying to figure out Jokic MVP this year and be like, oh, maybe it's Shea Jokic just Alexander. It's like, nah, it's Jokic. Come yeah. on. Don't ever think this. Jeffrey Donovan as bottles is incredible, but uh and even the way he like does the prison walk is fantastic. And I the, love when Jeffrey Donovan in the riot scene when he stabs the guy and he does the the three step back getting away from the guy after. It's yeah. just like but like while kind of looking around and see if anyone caught him. And then puts dirt on his bloody knuckles so nobody yeah. can see that he was fighting. Yeah. Did Jeffrey Donovan have a good enough career for He's one How of much my favorite like character him? actors right now. He shows up in a lot of Taylor Sheridan stuff. He's so good. When is, have you ever seen Jeffrey Donovan where you're like, oh man, why did I don't know this guy's in this? I'm always the opposite. I'm always like, yeah. Jeffrey Donovan. Oh. Yeah. Um, flipping recasting couch a tiny bit. I have, I have a conversation we need to have here. Well, I'm changing the actual premise of it. It's not just recasting couch now. You can recast the role, the director, or the city the movie is located. So in this movie, the city doesn't matter. Director, you could probably say Michael Mann. this movie needs to be related to the California prison system because of the gangs that are in it, kind of. Like, it yeah. definitely is. It can't just be like in Vancouver or something. No. So let me just 
thought experiment this okay. with you because we both love this movie. If it's Michael Mann and it's Brad Pitt as Jacob, is this like one of the biggest movies of the last 10 years from an action standpoint? Uh, yeah, but it's going to be a lot different. It's going to be okay. a lot more about like the, what he's reading and it's going to be a lot more about like what he's doing to expand his mind, I think. I think it would just be a much different film. I, I, it would be, it, we would have done it on the rewatchables like 150 movies ago. What's your recasting? Uh, it's a little bit more playful just because Rick Roman, Roman Wall wound up writing Den of Thieves. I would talk about Pablo Schreiber or Gerard Butler as money. Oh, Gerard Butler is money. But it's like a, a little bit younger Gerard Butler and you could see his life being like, he he would be a very convincing like smarmy stockbroker. So, I mean, I could see Schreiber doing it too, but just because those guys have been in in later works by Rick Roman Wall. Craig, who would you have as money? Of the names you just listed or just no, I can anyone. anybody? You, you, pick, you can have anybody from the last 10 years. Chalamet? Uh, Chalamet? <laughs> Couldn't do one pull-up in that cell. Um, I don't know. That's hard. I'd have to think about that. I don't have anybody off the top of my head, to be honest. Could this have been our our guy, Chris Hemsworth? He's too young. Well, he's he plays the, basically this person this person in Black Hat. A bit younger. Ryan Reynolds, I wouldn't have believed it. Me neither. No. Gosling? Gyllenhaal? I don't. I don't see it with Jalen Hall. Driver. I don't know. Oh, Adam Driver. Wow. <laughs> oh, Adam Driver. Is Adam Driver, guy. shot caller. That would have been amazing. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's the winner. Tony Romo or Chris Collinsworth for the director's commentary. <laughs> He's gonna get raped, Jim. He's gotta stand up for himself in there, Jim. He's gotta do it right now, Jim. Jim. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Half ass internet research. So Relativity Media acquired the US rights to this film for three million and then went bankrupt in 2015. And this movie did not actually come out for another two years until somebody had acquired somebody else acquired it. So our guy Jamie Lannister, red hot in Game of Thrones at that point. And this is gonna be his crossover action movie breakout, and then it gets delayed by two years. Like Shay, we talked about when this happened to our guy Glenn Powell. Um Sometimes you get bad luck with this shit. Oh, it's like, Glenn, oh, Glenn Powell would be pretty interesting in this. He's too young for when the movie comes out, but I think no, I know. Right but if you were now, do Glenn it Powell, now, yeah. yeah, yeah, he would be good in this. Um, so Bernthal's character, the Pen One, which is Public Enemy Number One, that is a white street gang from Orange County, <laughs> California, and the Beast was, I guess. Uh, based at least loosely on this white supremacist named Steven Single. Yeah. I don't know if he was in well, your search history. We, we had to Google him, so you might as well mention him. <laughs> <laughs> um, our guy Nikolai, he married former Miss Greenland actress and singer Nukaka Kosterwaldo in 1998. So okay. landed Miss Greenland. <laughs> way to go. Way to go, money. <laughs> I mean, I remember that 98 competition was fierce. Apex Mountain. Um, I have one, and it's like the only one of this movie for me. What is it? Uber. Oh. Because <laughs> if, you, if you watch this movie, you will never drive buzzed again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if if Jacob gets Uber, an Uber that night. I mean, well, now in 2024, there's no question it's I know, Uber. They're not I all know, piling but it's into just a like, car. I, if you ever want to make an advertisement for Uber, just show someone's shot collar. Yeah, just put the picture as your screensaver on your phone. <laughs> Nikolai, so I would say probably a little earlier Thrones when like Thrones. he's in The Other Woman. No, it's but like the th see, what season of Thrones? Yeah. Is it like third uh, season before well, he, he loses actually, his hand? His character really gets pr pretty like important. Like he's like a hero in the last season or two of Thrones. So like yeah. I think this is around this time because I think they shot this between seven and eight. So this yeah. is around, this is it. Omar Hardwick definitely because power is crushing it at this point. Mm -hmm. He's he's got it all going. Bernthal, not yet. No. He, he, from a that guy standpoint, I think this is the peak. Prison movies, no. The book, The Human Animal, I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, shoving balloons of stuff up your ass. It's way up there. It is, yeah. I guess it's up there. 
Um, prepaid cell phones? Probably not. I'm trying to think of other burner phone movies that are really good. Aryan Brotherhood? I don't know what 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 was. Have they ever been commemorated like this? Cinematic in a movie? Aryan Brotherhood. Cinematic Aryan Brotherhood. It's way. Yeah. Up there. Yeah. All right. I'm really excited for this one. A new category, and I haven't gone through all the mailbag stuff, but this was the one no brainer new category that we're just having forever. Cruiser Hanks. <laughs> Cruiser Hanks is your lead of shot caller. You can have either one from any point in your career. Who do you want? Is it Cruz or is it Hanks? I, I want Cruz. I want Cruz after eyes wide shut. I put Cruz with like seven exclamation points. This yeah. is the Cruz movie I always wanted. It's I basically also, he gave it to us in collateral, but I would have wanted so this. So into it, he would get oh my so God. into the to the bodybuilding stuff. He would be, you know, lifting a guy doing squats with a guy on his shoulders. <laughs> that scene when he's when he's lifting Ripper, when yeah. he's doing squats with Ripper on his shoulders. Cruz definitely would have done that. He would have figured out some like the shanking. He would have been like, I've practiced this all day in a mannequin in my mansion. Um, he would have done that. I feel like he would have learned some sort of skill in prison that he would have convinced he would have the director been like, to put add. Me in prison for three months. I have to learn the way. You know, like right. I, he would just be like, I, I'm gonna wear like a like a fake beard and go to jail. He would have figured out some form of like prison yard pickleball that the guy would have been like one of the best guys at. <laughs> So he could have learned how to play like prison bar, prison yard, prickleball. Cruz would have been the hair slicked back, the weird faces. I just think Hanks has no chance. Yeah. 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 So now since we've started Cruz versus Hanks, it's now a one, one tie through okay. two movies. Good to keep, keep track. Yeah. Racehorse rock band wrestler, or fantasy team name. Shot caller wins all of it. Yes. Shot caller is amazing. Yeah. Picking nits. So Jacob blows a 0.1 at the accident. Just hold off an hour and do the police station blood test, right? I, Jacob, you're supposed get, to be a smart I, guy. I think that it's the trauma of his buddy getting killed. Right, he's just not thinking Tom. right. Okay. Yeah. Why did Money give the extra 2,000 guns to Kutcher? Uh, I think he is working on a broader morality and justice like plan. I, so like a lot of my Andy and Red stuff is like, what's what's money's long term vision for the Brotherhood? Right. Is he going to tear oh. it down from the inside or take is it to it, Vegas? Right. Get right. a mansion in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> try to try to become a legitimate family. <laughs> uh, um. Would the shot caller really have this much control in prison? I don't really understand how prisons work. Uh, I mean, I, uh, crucially, what happens if they don't have this guard in their pocket? Because that guard right. is pretty much like the in, the fulcrum for the entire thing. What if the guard's like, "Hey, I was thinking about it. Like, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need three times as much what money." What if the guard's month. like, "Hey, by the way, I'm taking the wife to Epcot, so like, I won't be here to do your text <laughs> message." <laughs> hey, just FYI, I'm on vacation those two weeks at the end of March. <laughs> yeah, we got. So a time when you share. need your illegal cell phones and your balloons, I'm gonna be out. But yeah. I'll be back on April 2nd. Do you have any pick and nits? Because I have one big one. Uh, just stuff that might have been left on the cutting room floor, like what Redwood's beef with the guard was. They refer to it as if it was something that we should have known about. I don't know if right. I missed it or something, but like yeah. Re Redwood's got a, all this promise as a character and then goes off. And then, like I said before, the the gun deal just gets a little bit naughty where you're like, wait, yeah. so Shotgun and Herman were working together but shotgun and and Kutcher were working together. So yeah. Here's my biggest pick and knit. And I'm upset that we weren't consulted because I don't think, I think we're two of the foremost prison movie authorities. Yeah. No cafeteria scene. <laughs> Come on guys. Yeah. It's a fucking staple. You gave us the riot. You gave us the new guy shows up. You gave us the guy who cried the first night well, had the worst night of his life. Those guys are eating in their cells, right? When it well, when the, when they're all in the bunks in the first part, right? Yeah. When they're all like crammed in that one, there had to have been some place where they all ate. Give me forty seconds of it. Give me the one like somebody takes somebody else's food. Or somebody yeah, somebody spills trips. his milk. Yeah, there's yeah. Just too many good ways it can go. There's food. There's silverware that could be potential fights. There's fights. There's the guys walking around. There's little groups like who sits at what table. It's the staple. Got to have that in. Sequel, prequel, prestige TV, all black cast are untouchable. Um, 
What is this as a as a prestige TV kind of concept? I think it's much because it's hard to imagine anybody making something this raw and like male centric. Like I think you'd get a lot more Lake Bell if it was like a more of a series. But I would I would be curious to know. Like I think I'd, there a more detailed and expanded version of this would be pretty interesting. It's like when do you reveal the shotgun twist? Yeah. How 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 do you execute like the last couple of episodes with like all the different like confrontations that have to happen and 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 do you end it with with money taking over like this? You know what's interesting about the prestige idea? I forgot to mention this earlier. If this movie happens probably even 3 years later, Burnthal is the lead of Shot Caller, right? Yes. Yes. There's like no question. Yes. So the prestige TV of this, it almost in my head, it's almost Burnthal as the lead guy. So he's doing this instead of American Gigolo. The other thing I was thinking was, should this be an advanced stat of for action movies like this, how many guys could John Burnthal have played in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> like, this movie had a Burnthal rating yeah. of like 4.5. Yeah, I mean, I would see Burnthal as his son on the soccer field. <laughs> he's like, hey, dad, free kick. <laughs> could have played the lawyer. Yeah. He could have played basically any of the five key guys. He easily could have played just the guy who came back from Afghanistan who just was, you oh, know, yeah. he could have played it down. Emery Cullen's think, really good in that role. Yeah, I like that. I think this is a six Burnthal movie. <laughs> Speaking six of Burnthal, is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins, Danny Trejo, Sam Jackson, JT Walsh, Byron Mayo, Harling Mays, Evil Laughing, Ramon, Ramon Raymond? <laughs> <laughs> or Philip Baker Hall. I wanted to make the case for Evil Laughing Ramon Raymond. Sure. Just be just be in uh in there at some point when before before when they're in the yard, like before the riot, when when he's trying to get in with the uh Berthal crew, and he's like, What are you gonna do? Are you gonna put a balloon in your ass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, honestly, like first of all, I stated uh, this breaks two two rules of Wayne Jenkins. One is Bernthal's already in it. Two, yeah. these guys are already going away a long fucking time, big boy. <laughs> right. You almost, <laughs> but obviously, mean, Danny Trejo should have been in this movie. Yeah, this is a rare... Danny Trejo absolutely wins the yeah. category. You're right. You're right. Good call. Just one Oscar who gets it. I I know it's a hometown decision, but I'm going to say Burnthal. It's Burns. Yeah, I think yeah. so. It's my, I thought it's he's Burnthal. the best in this. Like, he easily yeah. could have been best supporting actor. Probably an answerable questions. We know definitively why they shot money at the house party, right? Or tried to. That was Burnthal trying to just take him out so he didn't have to be the rat. Yeah, yes, but it's Herman. Yeah, I guess that's right. But then what's, what's Burnthal going to do when money's dead? And now he still owes Kutcher some sort of deal, right? Like he still has to like serve up some sort of crime on a platter to get it. It's his almost like his way of getting out of it. So he yeah, didn't have maybe to do the deal. It. Yeah. This is a good one. Craig, feel free to join in on, on this one. Um, how do you learn how to quick stab people in prison? Is it like a little course? <laughs> Only in prison do they do those quick. We don't see that in any other form of movie know, when get, somebody gets stabbed. Ghostface and Scream never does that. It's always no. in the side. It's like right around the rib cage. Yeah. It, Ian, how do they know all the spots? Like, is that what they're just reading well, all day in prison? Like the nine read. points? Yeah, the physical anatomy books that they get to read. I think it's, it's probably passed down. It's like, yeah, you go for this, this, or this. It's like kidney, side of the neck, straight in the heart. There's like a leg vein. Sometimes they go after. What what else is there? Yeah, arteries. You want to hit the arteries. Yeah, yeah. You had any arteries, so they just study where all the arteries are. But it's like that quick, 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 quick stab. And it's almost like if you're casting one of the actors for this, some people aren't that coordinated. Like, oh, sorry, I, ca I can't get the quick stab thing down. Cruz would be practicing at his home well, for four Waldau months. Waldau obviously did shiv training because there's a yeah. couple of times where it's like he goes for the the butter knife in the cheesesteak restaurant, and then when he when he goes after Burnthal, it's pretty intense. And along those lines, just having the razor blade handy, but not cutting yourself on it. Like we saw in Pacific Heights, Michael Keaton has it, where he's just kind of playing with a razor blade. It's like, I, I'm terrified of any razor blade. Like it would yeah. seem just so easy for nine things to go wrong. How do these characters get so comfortable with razor uh, blades? One of my weird secret phobias is, or not even, but it's like, it creeps me out as watching guys get shaved in movies. In, yeah. the new, in the new Roadhouse, the guy's getting shaved while he's on a boat 
And yeah. it's like rocking a lot. And I was like, I just can't. There's something about like the the throat cut stuff that really gets to me. I'm with you. What'd you have for best double feature choice of this movie? I had, uh, Can I do a couple unanswerable questions? Oh, I didn't know you had any. Let's hear Yeah, them. so sometimes, you know, you watch these movies and you write something down and then a couple of days later you're doing the pod and you're like, why did I write that down? I just have, should there be NIL for prison gangs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have any reason. <laughs> I'm just like, if the NCAA can change. <laughs> Maybe you're in the brotherhood, but you know, it's like, the Mexican guys made a really compelling offer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expected to switch sides, but yeah, you know, you know like, they uh, said no balloons up my ass for two years. <laughs> All the ramen I could eat. The other uh, thing I had written down for probably unanswerable is, is the hit money puts on the dude making a run at Herman the greatest hit by a white safety since Eric Weddle's <laughs> retirement? <laughs> There's a couple of white defensive backs in the draft this year. Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe they could be money. Yes, that's a good one. What'd you have for double feature choice? I had the Jericho Mile. I would go Jericho Mile than this, and that's a great three. And a half I had Den of Thieves, but Jericho's great. Den of Thieves, Thieves is good. Andy and Red Zawatne Award for what happened the next day. I talked about this, but what's what's his vision? What's the five year plan for the brand? You know. Yeah. How does he? You know, like when Andy finally got some control in Shawshank. The, the books, the library became a big thing for him. Yeah. How do so we build the library up? I'm just going to write letters twice a week. We need more books. Do you think that uh, he's going to get the Aryan Brotherhood into like Robin Hood style stock investing? <laughs> <laughs> Go back to his roots. <laughs> he's, he's, been the, he's big into crypto. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, money, money's telling us this Bitcoin. Crypto is the new myth. We got to get out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'd want any memorabilia from this movie. That's a great point. I don't know if I would either. So I'm gonna pe maybe pass on this category. Yeah, it would be it would be cool to just have one shiv, but I wouldn't really want it. You know, I wouldn't keep it sharp or anything. It's like, what's that? It's the beast bloody boxers from the final <laughs> scene of Shot Caller. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's gonna work. Um, Coach Finstock Award for best life lesson. Okay, so we didn't really get into any of the rock bottomness of it. Obviously, best life lesson is don't drive drunk. Yes. Start uh, there. You know, I would also say that once... I mean, like, what, what what else would you have for this? I would say if you're getting thrown in with the big boys, you got 24 hours to prove that um, <laughs> you're not going to be a victim. Okay. You need to be a warrior to, or a victim. That's my gotta, life lesson. Gotta, warrior gotta, or victim. Pick a guy in the yard and take a shot at him. Okay. Really interesting. Who won the movie? I think I'm going to go Rick Roman Waugh just because he goes on to write Den of Thieves. He's kind of created this subgenre with this trilogy of prison movies that he makes and Den of Thieves of like contemporary L LA crime thrillers. So I'm going to go with him. I'm tempted to go Bernthal, but I think he. It's, it's definitely. Doesn't. Yeah, I think you're right because I don't think it's Nicholas Costawaldo because he really, like a couple years later, nothing incredible career wise is happening for him. Um, in this case, and it's interesting, we've seen this sometimes. My guess is people are going to be fired up that we did Shot Collar because either they loved it and didn't realize other people loved it or they don't know about it yet and they're going to watch it and be like, holy shit, that movie was awesome. Yeah, and it's on Netflix, so it's pretty easy. Yeah. My guess is this movie is going to have a pretty awesome tale, especially with the Netflix bump. But um, sometimes it takes a couple of years. We talked about it when we did the Rounders pod. Like Rounders took a couple of years and then within four years I wanted to do awards with quotes from it for my ESPN column because I was like, I fucking love this movie. And I don't know, maybe other people do, but who knows? I do feel like shot caller is going to move into that. I definitely agree. I think it, it, it's like a classic, like Netflix, like just spits it out every once in a while. And you're like, Oh man, maybe I'll watch a little bit of shot caller now. You I'll know? tell you what, who else is inching toward it is triple frontier. Oh my it's, God. It's dude. just Say baby stepping its way. Say the it's word. Getting, it's getting closer and closer. Well, we'll know, we'll know if we're, our instincts are right. We're going to bring in Craig Coral back. Um, let's hear it, Craig. What'd you think? Well, first off, before I even tell you what I thought, I, I wanted to check. Obviously, our legal and justice system has a lot of issues, but I, watching this movie, I was like, 
is it really right that if you you know drive drunk and you and and you get in a car accident and somebody dies do you really go to prison with the serial killers and the rapists like is that right so i asked my dad who was a lieutenant for 30 years and that is correct like you actually just get dropped into that scene and i got i like i I really enjoyed this movie and i gotta say one thing it does a great job of is it really makes yeah it makes it seem as though prison gangs and violence is impossible to avoid like if you go to jail like you're, don't they it, even reference like when he's like doesn't bottle say something like if you thought you were going to come in here and teach us math like that's not what what we're doing like here. genuinely yeah. i don't I, you have to join a gang i don't know how he could have just like like did his 18 months and gotten out there's no right. way to avoid that which i thought was in, in, insane they but say yeah, that to him they say that lone wolf shit's not gonna work here yeah yeah and that's that's just how it goes period but but i, I was a little dubious you know this movie never heard of it Made $3 million, Jamie Lannister playing a prison leader. But I, I was pleasantly surprised. It's tight. It's like very kind of easy and smooth to follow. It does a great job. Like every five minutes, there's a new supporting character that comes in and kind of takes over the scene. It's got a really deep bench. Um, I did have a few, I had a few notes I thought that could take this movie from an eight to a 10. Okay. I think it needed one kind of like cool heisty scene to take it to the next level. I think that's the gun deal and it's right there. And it's yeah. And they just couldn't land the plane on it. Couldn't. Yeah. There was, they didn't do a great job of depicting like how something was orchestrated or sneaking something in. I think they could have added that. The second thing is I didn't think they did a great job with Jacob, like who he was before. I think his character obviously grew and developed, but I didn't, was he like a seedy stockbroker? Was he a kind of a good guy? I feel like we didn't know who he was before, really. It was like he was yeah, a family weird. man. He's who like, like, seems like he's like, we should do this because this Republican might get elected. Is he elected. like a scummy finance that, guy or not can't really? Tell. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's. I, th- I, I was trying to interpret the pickup basketball scene because they show him getting knocked three. over. Yeah. And he's a, kind of a pacifist about that. He's like, it's okay. Like, so, yeah. Like, my number three note is that we, this huge miss not to have a prison basketball scene follow up where we see him at the beginning <laughs> of the movie. He's the biggest guy in the court. He's You're like six so five right. and he's soft as hell, big man. We need him to develop into Draymond Green an hour into the movie. And he's oh, on the yeah. court commanding shit, throwing elbows, maybe even a shiv on the court. Huge missed opportunity having prison basketball and showing his character arc through basketball. You, you know, know what? I, I got. Yeah, it's, you're it's an incredible right. point because I mentioned earlier we missed the cafeteria scene too. If you're doing a prison movie, you have to have a cafeteria scene and a basketball scene. It's just the rule. I mean, yeah. it, he's such a disappointing big man. He, he goes down like a bag of doorknobs and he's like 6'4". The second right. he gets into the paint, he gets boxed out. Right. I, I needed think to see if, him. You're also yeah. onto something here, Craig, and it's why you and me probably wouldn't do great in prison, but I think Bill <laughs> might be okay. Because w- here's what happens is uh, you and I probably get jumped into gangs and destroyed, but Bill <laughs> could still maintain, like, what if Bill had, you know, his wife smuggling some podcast gear? 100%. And then, like, the next week is doing, like, inmate trade value pods? <laughs> right. I'm just... <laughs> I'm I'm immediately inviting like can I get the beast? The beast you want to come on my new prison pod? He's got a studio set up in one of those cages. Be- yeah. The beast, well, let's go through your filmography, you know? <laughs> well, the move is you you have to get in a fight and maybe even try to kill somebody in the first 24 hours and serve your serve your 30 days. At least let people know like if you're going to come at me, like you I'm might take a, punk, a couple yeah. hits too. He's but then he's ranking all the books, he's got the rereadables going on. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's the thing. If you got to basically eventually end up where where Andy Dufresne did where you're contributing you're something to the prison yeah. that brings other people into it. So yeah, yeah the pod, prison podcast, I think. You know, I think the counter to a prison podcast would be there's just a lot of Stuff with with podcast equipment that could be used as weapons. Sure, yeah, but I mean, maybe they have it all in like a secure location, and and I think also, honestly, calling yourself the Podfather would be like up there with the Beast. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like th- this is the Beast. This is Redwood. What's your name, Podfather? <laughs> Podfather. From the inside with Bill Simmons. That's, so, uh, I'm here yeah. with Redwood. It's the Podfather here. <laughs> Redwood and I are going to talk about uh, the Beast. Redwood just put up 23 and 8 on money. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, on prison can, I hoops. See, can I see it for more than a month? Is that okay? <laughs> can I see it? <laughs> you guys are you guys are ready to give money MVP. I just want to see it for more than a season. <laughs> 
Oh man. So Craig, uh, you think this movie will have legs? Yeah, it's hard. There's so many movies now. Like if this movie came out 20 years ago, I feel like it would have tons of rewatchable legs on cable. Now it's like, I don't know. How's anybody going to find this movie? It's on Netflix. Netflix. I mean, yeah, yeah, Netflix is going to But there's so much. It. I mean, that's not even saying anything. There's a million things on Netflix. Like why somebody who would click this movie? I don't know. Well, Maybe. you know, this goes back to one of my greatest ideas of all time was an all prison movie channel called Bars. B-A-R-Z. Yeah. From the people who brought you heists. And it's everything has to have some sort of prison connection. And then we're just running Oz every day, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. That would be PM. good on like Tubi. Yeah, or HBO 8. Like there's nine HBO channels and it's like HBO Family, HBO 3, HBO Z. Like just make one of them a prison. I think if I was running HBO, I would take like HBO 4, HBO 5, and each month would be a theme or each like, you know, every three months. And it would just be like doing prison. This is all prison stuff. Or yeah. it's like, we're just going Sopranos for the entire month of May. Just you come here, here's the Sopranos. I don't think they theme month it enough. It's too random. It will be amazing like, if you bought Turner Classic Movies and everybody was like, great, Bill's going to save cinema. And he's like, no, we're just going to show Shot Caller. Like, yeah, not, <laughs> not at all. Have you seen the rewatchables? There's going to be no saving here. Yeah, we would have no is- movies before 1972. And I'm just showing American Me for a month. 